Welcome. We're glad to have you back with us today. Thank you for tuning in. I want to speak to you today. I want to just kind of take my Bible in my hand. And, and, and I want to talk about a very important subject. Very important subject. And that is revival. Revival. And uh, my first thought is what to do when you do not have a hundred voice choir. And the answer to that question is do what you would do if you had one. You pray and fast and wait on God. Sow seed, the word, you see, men don't start revival. Revival breaks out. And this is what I'm afraid sometimes people don't understand and realize. You can have a series of services and you can have good times and if people get blessed and occasionally, you know, you baptize someone and so forth. But I want to tell you something. When revival, when it breaks out, if some, someone in the back of the church that you that's not used to getting a blessing, all of a sudden they lift their hands and start weeping. And then somebody else gets up that you've been trying to reach for a long time. And they walk up to the front with their hands lifted. It's just revival and people that you have been asking for a long time, all of a sudden they come on their own. And a lot of people that you didn't invite, they, they come. That's when, when revival breaks out. Now, I'll tell you what, our music is great, and, and uh, we love music, and music goes with church, and we'd hate to go to church without music, but I'm going to tell you something. Music is no substitute for prayer, dedication, and consecration. It's really not. Men don't start revival. Men don't. And you know what? I want to tell you something. When a revival breaks out from God, it's pretty hard to stop, too. A lot of time people act naughty, ugly, fuss. If you're going to have any trouble, a lot of times it comes when right in the middle of a revival because the devil's mad. But I'm going to tell you, it takes a pretty good fuss to stop it, to stop revival. I uh, told my wife one time, come back from the barbershop, I said, honey, I saw a man today that should be in our church. He should be in church. And she said, well, how do you know? I said, I, I don't know. I said, I just looked at him and saw him and I just felt like he ought to be in church. He's smoking a cigarette. Just a part of the world. But I said, I, I just have a feeling. She said, well, let's pray for him. Let's pray for him. I didn't know his name. Didn't know where he lived. Didn't know if I'd ever see him again or not. And we started praying. 
and we prayed for one whole year. And one morning, one morning, he walks in. And I said, Joe, that's that man. That's that man that I, I saw at the barber shop. And revival broke out. It was revival time. I was preaching uh, some services in Kentucky. And as when I gave the invitation for people to come forward, one of the most beautiful ladies you'd ever you'd ever see, she came walking down the aisle weeping and she stopped and so I got all down from the pulpit and I went to her she opened her purse she said I was going to commit suicide today and I thought well I'll just give that church one chance to see if it's really anything to it if it'll really help me and she picked up the, the gun, was in her purse, and I took it. And it had one shell in it. She said that was the shell that I was going to use, and I took it out. And put it in my pocket, and she lifted her hands and received the Holy Ghost. She began to speak in other tongues. And she was so thankful. I want to tell you, conviction, conviction does that. We can't produce that. No one with their, with their fancy talk or you can have a hundred degrees and still it doesn't produce that. You've got to have the power of God. Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you.